Hello, hello, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. I wanted to give an update in terms of my diagnosis and why that makes me happy. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Valo Cycle. Thanks for stopping by. I typically do motorcycle related content. One of the big pillars of the channel is around mental health. I'm a big proponent of mental health, removing the stigmas around it. My ultimate objective is to simply help other people develop behaviors and skill sets to help them develop a positive mindset and to hopefully share that positivity and that goodness with other people within the community. To support that, I'm very open about my own mental health and challenges. If you've watched some of my other previous videos, you've heard me talk about dealing with anxiety, dealing with imposter syndrome, being very self-critical, self-defeating, not in a good headspace. And so I've sought out therapy from multiple different sources. I've talked to numerous coaches. I've talked to numerous therapists for going on about seven months now. And the most recent update that has happened to me is I have been formally diagnosed and am now on a treatment plan. Now, in the effort of being open and transparent with all of you, I've been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, which is not surprising in the least. What did catch me a little bit off guard was also the diagnosis of ADHD. And I have talked about that previously as well, where I was always pretty confident that I had generalized anxiety, but ADHD wasn't necessarily something that I had considered. But then after reading numerous books and doing a lot of research and having quite a few conversations, it made more and more and more and more sense. Now you may be thinking, well, you know, ADHD, that's so common, that's so typical, what's the big deal? Or generalized anxiety, okay, whatever, get over it, big deal. While there are far more serious disorders and challenges that other people face every single day, I just want to share my story and how this has impacted me and how getting on the right treatment plan has made such a big difference in my life, even in the very, very short term, where I've only been on this treatment plan for a few weeks, but it has made significant and noticeable changes in terms of how I communicate, how I interact, how I work with other people my observations within myself and others, it's, it's made such a big difference. I didn't know I had ADHD and I suffered unnecessarily for so long trying to force my way into productivity, into a positive headspace, into doing everything right. I wanted to share, hey, you know, if you recognize some of those similar challenges that I'm going to be sharing, then, you know, it might be a good idea to talk to a licensed professional and see, you know, what, what might be going on there. There may not, there may be, there may not be, and I am not a licensed therapist. I am simply a proponent for mental health and you should not take anything I say as medical advice. <laughs> Go talk to a professional, talk to a doctor, talk to a licensed therapist, talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. I'm simply sharing my experiences. So generally speaking, in my head, <laughs> it's going typically going 100 miles an hour where when I'm in a conversation or when I'm trying to think about something or even just playing video games or just watching TV, reading a book, walking the dog, whatever, I'm always, always thinking about 20 to 30 different things. That in itself isn't a bad thing, but what gets in the way is overcomplicating everything. So if I'm talking to somebody, I'm trying to think about all the different routes that this conversation could go. And if I say this, then how are they going to react to that? And then thinking about all those different things. And then I just end up talking about just irrelevant things, talking about things that don't really matter, 
talking about all of these different facets versus just keeping a simple conversation going and not necessarily worrying about all the different avenues that that conversation can take or how am I being perceived or am I saying the right things? Am I doing the right things? Are they going to not like me because I said this or that, whatever. So just really over analyzing every single possible avenue I could take within the conversation and apply that to every single conversation or every single interaction that I have. Other examples being, you know, if I'm trying to go to sleep at night, I would have really bad insomnia because I could not turn off my brain. And my brain would always be thinking about work and meetings and past conversations and what should I have said there? What should I say here? Worrying about everything that's upcoming. I gotta do this, I gotta do this that and then thinking about all the other things I could do and possibly do or shouldn't do and everything else and then thinking about just random experiences then going down those rabbit holes that's where it, it just is impossible to turn off my brain it's impossible to silence it and that's just going on 24 7 just non-stop 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 then that gets in the way of organization because i'm not really being conscious in terms of what am i actually doing i'm thinking about everything else i get disorganized i get forgetful or i'll start 50 different things and not actually complete any of them or i'll think oh wait i gotta go do this and i'll go and jump on that and start that for a little bit and then as i'm starting that activity i'll start thinking about something else oh wait i gotta go do that and go do this and or an email come in or a text will come in or something else will come in that'll just catch my eye or catch my interest and then all my attention shifts to that activity. So the only way I actually get anything done is through sheer force of will to focus and to get GSD, get stuff done. <laughs> and it, it is not a pleasant activity to force myself into that mindset. So that's really been how I've been able to be even moderately successful within my life is through sheer force of will, not because I was actively engaged or not because I was thoroughly passionate or intelligent or anything else like that, it's through sheer force of will for me to get stuff done. That's been my life, right? And you can see how things can get complicated and the anxiety can come up and everything else when things aren't getting done and then I'm scrambling to get stuff done and then it's not to the quality that I want it to be because it was rushed or I'm forgetful or just I'm saying things I don't mean to say um, and not in a bad way. I'm not like insulting people, but just getting things off track or adding complexity where there doesn't need to be. And then talking to the different therapists and going through meditation and practicing mindfulness and breathing techniques and everything else that has been immensely helpful but it's still very much a challenge to just stop the brain just to slow it down. And so once I got that diagnosis and started on a new treatment plan and continuing to do all the things that have helped me with meditation and journaling and mindfulness and everything else, but also coupled with medication, that has made a profound impact. Even from day one, from day one, starting on that treatment plan made a profound impact. It just, it cleared the noise. The analogy I have come up with is, imagine trying to have a conversation with somebody in an extremely crowded room where people are just jumping in front of you, yelling and screaming, and there's music blasts. So basically, think of it like you're in a club, right? <laughs> people are butting in, jumping into the conversation, pulling you away, talking about different things, talking about incoherent stuff, and there's music, and there's distractions, and all this other stuff, right? How productive can you be in that type of environment constantly, right? And now being on medication and continuing to do the therapy and everything else, it's like you're at a coffee shop, right? Okay, there's coffee, there's people talking, you know, there's baristas making drinks and, you know, occasionally the espresso machine will hiss and all that good stuff. But for the most part, you can have a very pleasant conversation and have a very productive time in that coffee shop environment. That's really the key difference there. And in terms of work, you know, oftentimes I'll be like, well, okay, I'll do that later. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. And then I'll have this mile long to do list of things that I could have absolutely done, but still didn't get done or things that were just started, but never completed versus now it's just, okay, I got to do it. All right, go just do it. Like, I don't even think about it. Just jump into it. Right, got to get done. All right, go do it. And my productivity 
has gone up immensely just because it's cleared out all of that useless noise. The conversations I'm having with people are much more succinct. They're much more direct. They're much more simplified, right? I'm not talking about things that are irrelevant. You know, I'm talking about things that really matter. And I'm able to follow along in their, in the conversations much more because I'm not thinking about how am I going to respond and all of these different things that are going on in my head. I'm much more able to pay attention and have deeper level conversations with them. And so my meetings have become much more productive. And I'm not so worried about all of these other things. It's just like, all right, just whatever will happen will happen. I'll focus on the things that are in my control and don't necessarily worry about the things that are out of my control. And I'm being just overall much happier. It's a stark difference, you know, being in from that, you know, mindless club mindset into that coffee shop mindset and how much of a difference that has made and a positive impact that has made. Right now, for me, the key thing is to continue on that meditation, to continue that mindfulness, to continue journaling, and to continue to do the things that have supported me. And that's also the challenge with an ADHD mind is you always jump from the next shiny thing to the next shiny thing. So you'll pick up one thing, get really into it for a short period of time, then either get bored with it or find something else that's more interesting and then jump on that and completely forget about the other thing. So key example is, for me, I haven't been keeping up with my meditation and journaling as much as I would like to. So for me, it's like, okay, I, I need to continue to do that and put myself in situations and give myself a structure to continue to do that and not get distracted. And that's the other thing with, uh, with being on this treatment plan is the imposter syndrome has really, really gone down. I feel like I am in a place where I belong and I'm, I'm being much more proactive to find those opportunities to do much more meaningful work and to do those things that really align with my values. So I don't feel like, oh, I don't belong here anymore or everybody's so much smarter than me. I'm a fraud, I'm gonna be found out. And once they realize how incompetent I am, they're gonna fire me and I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm being set up for failure and all of this negativity and being able just to cut out that noise and say, okay, I may not be in the right environment that I want to be today, but what can I do to put myself in that right environment, right? And to not just keep kicking that can down the road and just spinning in circles, and then ultimately not doing anything. So the imposter syndrome has really gone down, and I've been able to be just much more open and transparent with people and not feel guilty about it, right? Saying, yep, I'm not good at that, and I would like to develop myself in these areas, but this is where I need your help. Or being able to just sit down and do the things that I don't like to do, but I need to do, and just being able to spend more time in that regard and just focus on just those activities, and just get stuff done. All in all, being able to have gone through this initial chapter in my life, this initial chapter in this journey has had profound impacts, positive impacts, on my outlook, my mental health, my relationships with people, my productivity at work. So if anything I said resonated with you, I would encourage you to find, some, find a professional to talk to. I'm always a general proponent for therapy. Even if you have positive mental health and you're in a good spot and you're doing everything right and you don't have any you know, like disorders or challenges or anything like that, it's still a good idea to talk to a therapist occasionally. It's still a good thing to do. Talk to an educated and licensed professional who can steer you in the right direction and give you some insight because that was my big lesson learned was I was struggling and forcing myself to do things uh, when I didn't need to, right? Where had I done this a long time ago and recognized that I was really forcing myself to do all this stuff, then I would have been able to put myself in a much better situation much earlier. And it's still a journey, right? It's an ongoing thing. I don't, it's never going to be something where it's like, all right, it's done and I never have to deal with it again. It's always going to be there. That's just how my brain works and that's okay. 
and that's a good thing. There are strengths and weaknesses to it. So it's all about how can we capture those strengths and utilize those as much as possible while also minimizing the weaknesses. I hope I have reduced that stigma of mental health and therapy a little bit because there's a lot of people out there who see mental health as just a buzzword. It's not something that's really that important or therapy is only for crazy people. And I want you all to know out there that if you are struggling, if you have challenges, seek help. Find your person that you can reach out to, talk to, vent to, support one another. Don't try and take all, don't try and take life on your own. You know, we are humans, we are social, we are social, we are social creatures. So find your community, find your group, find your people and share that positivity, build each other up. And if you didn't check it out, I did a live stream with Junkyard Dad, uh, Dadski. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about mental health and modal therapy and everything else. So that was also a fantastic conversation. So I recommend you check that out as well. By the time I publish this video, there is going to be less than one week for the 500 subscriber giveaway. So if you have not yet already, I recommend check out the form down below. Fill that out because we're doing a giveaway. All you have to do is fill out the form and write down what is something good that you have done for somebody else. Super simple. Then you'll get entered. As of this morning, there were only 17 people who have entered. So your odds of winning something are pretty good <laughs> considering, uh, considering the odds. So some of the prizes can be some gear, handlebars, uh, worst case scenario, you'll get a $50 Revzilla gift card if nothing I have uh, seems of interest to you. So really, no reason not to enter. That'll be it for today, everybody. I hope you all have a fantastic day. As always, everybody, be brave, do good, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.